Bienvenidos a Hora y Café. English, Rick, English. Okay. of Horror and Coffee. We're back. It's finally here. The latest episode, a new episode of Horror and Coffee. Ralph, how you doing? I'm good, bro. We, we, we've been gone for a while, actually. Um, we're working on a movie. Uh, we're still working on it. We're in post-production right post -production, now. Post-production. Uh, we finished it. Um, we just going through the phases of editing, and that's very... It takes time because of, you know, our, our prospective jobs. We are, you know, we got kids and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. And so, so forth to find time to edit and all that stuff because we basically are just doing everything together. Pretty and, much. And it's, it's not like we have a big crew. So whenever we have time, we put the time in for the film. But that's another story. We'll get back to to that some other time. Back. So, so the movie we're going to review is the sequel to the 1974 classic, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That is correct. Okay, apparently this movie kind of like ignores all the other incarnations that have come up in the last 10 years in the cinema. And uh, it jumps. It, it, it actually starts. Okay, well, well let's, let's start first this way. Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out in 1974. It was a big, humongous classic. Over time it became a classic. Big cult following. Right. But um, it, Halloween, of course, was the one that made that started it all. But in actuality, if you really want to go back, it was Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He right. was the first mass slash, mass slash killer. Right, 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 right. The movie became a hit over time. It became a hit, and there was sequels. And the sequel came right. out. This one takes it completely ignores all those films. It ignores them all, and 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 it it takes you back to the original classic story. Which, when it did happen. When they did say this, and they announced it yeah. in in websites that they were going to make a, a, a pre, not a prequel, a sequel to the original 1974 version, I was ecstatic. I said, "Wow, if they're going to," because I like I like movies um, to be from a certain time period, especially from the 70s and 80s. Right. Even if they make you know if if, if somebody was to make a horror movie right mm -hmm, now, I mm -hmm. would prefer it to be the time period of the 70s and 80s. And I'll right. tell you why, because there is no technology such as phones, uh, cell phones iPads, computers. So if a killer was stalking you, um, it'd be very much in hard for you to find help. Right, exactly. That's why I like that time period. Is we are putting this um, into our horror and coffee list of flaws. There's That's a lot, right. a lot of flaws. We have a lot of flaws. Okay, first of all, take a look at this photo. This is the poster of, of the movie. Yeah. It says Texas Chainsaw. 3D. Right. And look how creepy that poster looks. Yeah. It looks really creepy. And the top here says here, in 1974, one movie changed the face of horror. In 2013, a dark new chapter begins. Right. When I saw this poster, I was like, wow, this is going to be really good. And I'm sure if anybody saw this poster as well, will probably think, ah, oh, this is going to be awesomely creepy. And look at the way the guy looks. The guy looks like Gunnar Hansen from the original. Right. The mask is a little different. A little more creepier than the the 1974 version, but it's still Leatherface. It looks like Gunnar Hansen, and as you can see, his uh, trousers or whatever it is what he's wearing, it's a 1970s pant. So they got that right, and that's probably the only thing they got good in this movie. Okay, is the poster. <laughs> okay, this, the, okay. Here's the thing. The first floor. Let's start the first floor. First flaw, first flaw, first flaw. Here's the first flaw of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. Okay, we're going to tell you the, the faults in this film. The first flaw in this film is that these new characters, why did they add these new characters? They, they weren't there in the first film. They weren't there in the first film in the first place. And this does take place as a continuation from 1924. These new characters suddenly appear in the house. It was like the Brady Bunch. There's a woman with a baby, and there's all these other cousins and second cousins and brothers and sisters and uh, all these people. Right. Just think of Halloween one, where the, um, uh, Michael Myers just fell off the balcony after after the doctor shot him. Yeah. And then they do Halloween two. Let's suppose they did Halloween two, and all of a sudden the cops come to that house. Then you have 
couple new characters. Michael already. Myers' whole family is yeah. in there. His cousins, his brothers. But we never sisters. saw that in the first one. Right, exactly. So you see what we're getting at? They wrote these, these people in. like They wrote these people in for sake of trying to make a story. Right. Which just didn't make freaking sense from exactly. that point. Exactly, exactly. Right, so that's the big first flaw of this film. Yes. All right, mm -hmm. now we're going to go to the second flaw. And the second flaw is the timing. What yeah. year is this film? What year is this film? I mean, that... Honestly, I'm not sure. It's 1970. Um, no, no, I know the, the beginning is 1974, but then we're talking about years later. I believe it's 2013. It has to be 2013. They have they have cell phones, and not just cell phones. They have smartphones. Two is two iPhones. Right. Okay. So basically, this this film supposedly, and the, the poster says it right here. In 2013, a dark new chapter begins. All right. So this, this timing. It's 2013 now, several mm -hmm. years later, and they have iPhones, iPads. Yeah. How come the girl, the main character, who was a child... Who she was, was the a baby. baby. She was the baby in the house with the whole family. In, uh, in the 1974 version, mm -hmm. is now 20 years old. She At inherits least. the house, apparently, in the movie. But she looks like she's 20. She's still going through her rebellion, uh, her re re growing pains kind of phase. You know, she's all like teeny bopped out. So it's kind of like... What? What does that mean? Wait, did, 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 did the time flux happen? You know, was there a time machine or something that happened? Did Doc come in in the wrong time? How the hell did that work? I don't understand that. I mean, think about that for a minute. You know, you go to 1974, that's a good 40, year, 40 years, right? You've got a 20 year old. All right, so, <laughs> so, okay, so, that's basically what we have here is a movie that just doesn't know what time it is because if the girl looks 20 years old, 2013 from 1974, she should be around in her 40s. Yeah, I totally believe that. Mm -hmm. So, she doesn't look nothing like her from the 40s. She looks like a 20 year old. Yeah. So, that simply did not make any And you figure sense. by the time you hit 40, you have a more stronger foundation of where you are at your life at that point. It was quite clear this girl was still trying to find herself, so... Yeah, now, don't get me wrong, the girl looks pretty hot. She oh, that's looks, another one. It's Hollywood. So, and yeah. here we go. Hollywood seems to put... And I have a big, big problem with this. Hollywood seems to put good-looking people as the main center characters. And I don't want... Not in this film. Okay, okay you got the girl who's the main character. She looks pretty good. Yeah. Her friends look pretty good. Yeah. And then her boyfriend is the, the black kid who, he was big and muscular. Yeah, but the other face didn't look pretty. Good. No, we're not talking about the other face. We're talking about... <laughs> Hollywood seems to think that all people who like horror movies are stupid, <laughs> who have no sense of what, what whatsoever, and they just want to make the quick buck. Yeah, exactly. So Hollywood is obviously thinking... Just make a film about a guy killing people. Who gives a shit about the story? We're going to make some money because there's teens who want to take their girls out and see a scary movie. This movie is not at all scary. And for them to concentrate on somebody, some teenagers to see this movie, they got to see the 1974 version. <laughs> so how the fuck? <laughs> what they have to do, if this movie was based on the 1974 version as the sequel to 1974, then this should have been concentrated on people like us who are in our 40s. Yeah, exactly. Because we remember it. Right. But for kids, teenagers who don't yeah. give a shit about it. <laughs> they, they weren't there. They weren't there. They didn't, it didn't exist yet. They didn't exist. This has to be, and I'm sorry to say this, the worst of the series. Yeah. It yeah. is complete yeah. crap. It's garbage. It's garbage. Unfortunately... You know, they went that way. Any other any other flaws? Or was that pretty much it? No. There's still a couple I have. Okay. Victor right. has a couple more flaws. Hang in there, guys. All right. Hang guys. Another thing that I didn't like about this film is, of course, the lighting. The lighting? The, Again, the lighting? The lighting. Let me tell you something. The lighting. Why do car movies these days have to have excessive light? all over the place. In the dark, right? They don't even show the moon sometimes. Yeah. So if you're going to yeah. show lighting, show the moon. Make sure you focus on the moon a lot. Right. You know, right. so exactly. that we know that the light is coming from the moon. But if you're just going to show Leatherface chasing somebody, somebody in the field. Somebody, meanwhile, and the field looks like there's a giant spotlight shining on exactly. there. Exactly. I mean, I, I cannot be I scared. I mean, I get it. You want us to see them. But you know what? We're not blind either. You know, if you have a... 
serious visual problem, then maybe you need to talk to somebody about so that. What's the other? What's the other flaw? Another flaw would be the special effects. Oh my God, the CG special effects. What happened to good old prosthetics? You understand? I look. I understand that we live in a world right now where everything is computerized and digitized and everything. All right, songs are digitized. Movies are digitized. Everything is streamed. Everything is computer. But you know, th there is a saying: if it's not broken, why try fixing it? Right. So, so what you're doing, what people tend to do, is they go a little overboard with the uh, CGI effects. CGI's are good for certain things, but not for everything. Um, uh, George Romero said it best, and I'll tell you what he said. He said he likes CGI better, and this is the reason why he likes CGI better, and I understand why he likes it. Mm -hmm. Because when he was doing movies like Dawn of the Dead and, and, and Day of the Dead, when Tom Savini would do the special effects, mm -hmm. and if Tom Savini got it wrong, he would have to do it all over again, and it would take hours to do the same scene over again. So with it's prosthetics. a time thing. It's a time. So thing. you know, it's it's kind of tedious. Okay, we gotta wait another hour if we get because Tom Savini gotta make, get everything ready again. You know, because you know it's prosthetics. But with CG, if a neck gets slashed, the neck gets cut off, it's done on computer, one take. You don't have to do 50 takes of the same thing. Yeah, exactly. And that's why George Romero likes CG. Me, old school, prosthetics, but prosthetics look real. Prosthetics do look real. Because when you when when the CGI stuff happens, it's a little bit too... You could tell. You could tell. You could tell. You could tell. It's like, am I playing a video game here? What's this? Exactly. You mm -hmm. know, like... Leave so. that for a video game. Leave it for a big budget movie where they have... A huge cast. Yeah, like stuff. the Avengers or something. You know, that a movie like that is okay. CGI, you're at head off because it works. But not, you know? uh, but not something like this. Not okay, like so this. this movie has CGI, which obviously cost them money to put into the film. Yeah. They should have used that money to make this film better. Yeah, exactly. So what do you think, Ralph? Okay, I'm going to tell you right now. I, I, I'm going to give this movie one coffee cup. Just one. I, I saw it once. It's not worth me buying to put in my personal library. I'm not doing it. I saw it. I saw it. And I said, yeah, I'm not even bothering. You know, I'm not going to even watch it when it comes out on Netflix or HBO or something like that. I'm not going to do it. It's just not. I saw it. Okay, great. They had Got even, it in. They even had the audacity to put on the poster uh, a, a quote from Toby Hooper, the original director of the mm -hmm, Chessing mm -hmm. Song. Say, saying that it was um, a worthy sequel, I could not believe. He said, said that? that? And that's the quote they're using. I don't know if he said that. He probably said it not even seeing the film. Oh my it God. It probably paid him. I'm not sure because this film is no, not even comes close to being a worthy sequel. The time thing is just ridiculous. I don't get it. No if I was to rate the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films in order as the best to the worst, the yeah. best one obviously is the 1974 version. There's nothing better than that one. But then yeah. if you want to the, uh, rate the second one, I would say the new version of yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. That was pretty good. That was yeah. really yeah. good. Yeah, the one with Jessica Biel, right? That, that yeah, that was, was really good. good. That one was good. How many coffee cups do you give this one, though? This one? I don't give it any coffee cups. Any? Okay. I've well, given I give it, I give it at least one. It doesn't deserve it. Wow. Are you seeing hearing this game first? If I, if, I had, if I had to give a coffee cup to it, it would be for the poster? How about a Sanka envelope? <laughs> Probably. Okay, there you go. Wait, so Shame on you for not doing your research. Whoever, what's the guy's name? Who? The director of this. I have no idea. Shame, dude, you can't. No, no, it's not an iPad. <laughs> it's a freaking computer. You gotta use a mouse. Give this guy. Give me that. <laughs> We're gonna put that up. You see? Put a button right here, right here. No, we should put this on. Look, look, look. No, you're written by John Lessup. Like, all right, dude. You gotta. Let's look at the. Let's you can't do that again. <laughs> don't do that again. Don't don't get the chronology, se sequence of events screwed up. Don't do that. Okay. One coffee cup. He gives you none. Look Zero. He doesn't give you coffee. He gives you a donut. A donut. Zero. Well, no coffee cups. So there you go. Great poster, though. The poster does look good. Right? I have to admit. Alright, so anyway, there's our rating. Look, tell us what you think. 
on our blog, www.horrorcoffee.blogspot.com. Um, check us out on our YouTube page, on our blogspot, and, uh, you know, throw uh, read the articles. Um, you know, just check everything out. You know, we're, we're back, and we're back in full effect. And Texas Chainsaw 3D, not a worthy sequel at all. No, don't bother. Skip over it. <laughs>